All right, we are back with another Nuzlocke encounter tier list, this time for Pokemon Platinum, one of my personal favorite games to Nuzlocke. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Flygon HG. I do hardcore Nuzlocke for a living, technically. One of my main goals for this channel is to encourage other people to start Nuzlocking and providing them with the resources to feel confident enough to do so. So this video is going to rank each of the Pokemon that you can potentially find in a Platinum Nuzlocke and evaluate how good the Pokemon is, what specific threats the Pokemon helps against, and how likely you are to get the Pokemon in a random Nuzlocke, as well as what encounters you might miss out on if you end up getting that specific Pokemon instead of something else. So Platinum is different enough from Diamond and Pearl that I'll be focusing exclusively on Platinum, but some of what I say here will definitely carry over to Diamond and Pearl, just know that there are pretty big differences between those games. And I'm specifically going to be talking about hardcore nuzlocking, which by my definition means that you don't overlevel past the level of the next gym leader, you don't use items in battle, and you play on set mode. But as always, a lot of what we're going to talk about here is going to be very applicable to any type of nuzlocke that you want to do. And of course, just as a reminder before we get started, this is my opinion. Uh, it's not objective fact. I will likely make some mistakes or have some contradictions in logic. But based on feedback that I got from doing this in previous games, I did take notes while looking things up this time instead of just doing the rankings off the top of my head. So I'm hoping that my notes will kind of help with the logical flow and make sure that things are a little more consistent and there aren't as many like factual mistakes. So just I want to talk briefly about the game Pokemon Platinum in general and why it's one of my favorite games to Nuzlocke. Um, there are a few very difficult fights in this game. They will definitely give you trouble, especially if this is your first Nuzlocke, including a fairly difficult champion fight, which is always pretty fun to me. I don't love when the champion is like super underwhelming. And I do think that Cynthia is a pretty difficult challenge for especially first time Nuzlockers. But the level curve is very manageable for the most part, and the encounter lists on the different routes are relatively diverse, definitely the most diverse out of the first four generations. And I also think that the late game of this game, as well as the random trainers, are not nearly as punishing as in later generations, specifically Black two and white two. So if you're looking for a pretty difficult challenge, but not one that is super, super hard and ends up, you end up wiping to a bunch of random trainers and stuff, I think Platinum's a really good first game for you to try out or second or third, whatever. So let's just highlight the major threats here. Uh, I have a couple listed down here that I'll be continually referring to about which Pokemon are best for addressing them. In the early game, you have the first Mars and Jupiter fight. Those can be pretty tricky if you're not ready for them. You have the third gym leader, Fantina, who has a Miss Magius that is just really fast and really strong, especially at that point in the game. Crash or Wake can be kind of difficult if you don't have an electric type, but we'll talk about that later. And then Candice, I think, is by far one of the hardest gym leaders in this game. She's got a Frostlass that if she sets up Hail, can dodge your attacks and can also hit really hard with Blizzard and Shadow Ball. And then all of her other Pokemon are pretty strong too. You've got Earthquake on Piloswine, you've got the Obama Snow that has Wood Hammer. So she's a pretty tough gym leader for you to face. You've also got the Distortion World Cyrus fight that can be pretty hard if you're not prepared for it. And then in the Elite Four, most of the Elite Four is actually fairly easy other than Lucian, who is the last Elite Four member who has a Gallade, which is pretty tough to take care of, and a Bronzong with Calm Mind. So you have to watch out for both of those, as well as, of course, a very fast Alakazam and a slightly less fast, but still pretty strong Espeon. And then, of course, you do have Cynthia. So, you know, she's notorious for her Garchomp. So you do want to have a Garchomp answer, but the rest of her Pokemon are pretty tough as well. So we'll We'll keep those major threats in mind and we'll address the different Pokemon and how they can assess them. So we're just going to go pretty much in Pokedex order, although I've moved some things around to kind of reflect like where in the game you get it. So hopefully we can kind of move through the encounters as you would in the game. So of course, we're going to start off first with the starters. You can pick between Torterra, Infernape, and Empoleon. So unlike some generations, this generation has phenomenal starters. I think that Torterra, we'll just start with Torterra, is an absolutely an A-tier Pokemon. Torterra is phenomenal. It obviously makes the first gym leader Rourke trivial. He knows Razor Leaf at that point, and you can just kill all four of his Pokemon or three of his Pokemon. Torterra is pretty solid into Fantina since he'll learn Bite at that level, and he also learns Earthquake at level 32, which is just absolutely disgusting and it's also great for Maylene because it is the only one of the three starters that you will get at the level cap of Maylene. It's also perfect for Volkner obviously. So he gets a lot of utility moves as well. Leech Seed, Swords Dance, Rock Polish if you want to do setup. Razor Leaf is going to be his main physical grass stab move which is kind of annoying because it's pretty low power. I mean you can get Seed Bomb from the move tutor or you could rely on Wood Hammer but that has recoil. So that's not great and honestly as the game goes on Torterra is not super amazing in the late game 
because lots of random Pokemon have ice type coverage. Grass types in general are not super, super good. You're mainly going to want to use this for that early earthquake and then the grass type in the early game. Infernape, on the other hand, I think is an absolute S tier Pokemon. Sinnoh is pretty short on fire types, so it's good to get one at the beginning if you want it. Chimchar evolves into Monferno at level 14, so it will evolve before Rourke, meaning that it'll be pretty useful with the fighting type and it'll get Mach Punch. Um, Infernape is very fast, it's very strong, it's very good late game because it gets flamethrower and close combat, which is amazing coverage both on the physical and the special side. It's very good into Mars's Perugly, which can be a brick wall in the early game. And of course Infernape is very good into Candice, who as I said is probably the hardest gym leader in these games. So it's really nice to have a fire type to just instantly deal with her. This also easily beats Cyrus's Weavile. Uh, it obviously sweeps a Aeron in the Elite Four. It's okay into Lucian, definitely will kill the Bronzong in one shot as long as you can get it in safely, not on a Psychic. And just some downsides, it is of course very frail, so you'll have to be careful you can't switch it in as easily as the other two starters. And it's obviously not very good into Wake and does nothing into Fantina pretty much. So you're going to have to have other checks for those two if you take Infernape. But I do really think that this is a phenomenal Pokemon and it's great to get a fire type right off the bat. Empoleon, uh, you know, generally it's not great to take the water type starter because there's so many water types in this game. But Water Steel is a phenomenal typing and it just has very few weaknesses. This is definitely one of the best water types in the game. I'm going to put it in A tier. You get Surf plus Flash Cannon, which is just disgusting damage. Obviously makes Rourke very easy. It's pretty solid into Candice's Frostlass since Empoleon resists all of her moves. Um, Empoleon is obviously good into Lucian for the most part, as long as you avoid the few Focus Blasts that his Pokemon have, and I guess Thunderbolt on Mr. Mime. Piplup and Primplup are generally pretty bad. Um, you know, they're pretty under underwhelming in the early game, and this will make Gardenia a bit harder because you're going to have to rely on your other encounters. And of course, there are plenty of water types, so I'm not saying not to use this, but I do think it's the weakest of the three, but a free steel type is pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so let's move on to some of the other, you know, Pokemon that you're definitely going to get at some point in these routes because Staraptor is everywhere. Fortunately, Staraptor is an A-tier Pokemon. I don't know if it's quite as good as Empoleon because it's a little frail, but it's got the Intimidate pivot, the immunity to Ghost and uh, Ground type moves makes it a great Intimidate pivot. Brave Bird and Close Combat are both phenomenal moves as long as you make sure to kill whatever you're trying to go for in one shot. This helps with Gardenia. It's okay into Fantina since Staraptor is normal type and is immune to ghost type moves. It's going to be even more frail as a Staravia and a Starly. So that's kind of unfortunate, but you are pretty much guaranteed to get this at some point. Bibarel. I wish that Bibarel was better in this game, but Bibarel is just the definition of an early game Pokemon. It's very, very fine, but it's going to fall off pretty quickly once you get past like Fantina. Unaware and Simple are both really good abilities, but there really aren't that many instances where they're actually going to be that helpful throughout your playthrough. You don't really want to do defense curl and rollout strategies because you're going to get crit and rollout also keeps you locked in. And the sad thing about this normal type is that it's not even that good into Fantina because Miss Magius has Magical Leaf and Bibarel is part water type. It's okay for pivoting in that fight, but it really doesn't do that much that well. The one thing I'll say is that you get early headbutt and hyper fang, which which is pretty solid, you know. But the one other downside to this Pokemon is that it evolves at level 15, meaning that it's not very useful for Rourke at all. We're going to put this in C tier. Cricketune, another one that I wish was better. Cricketune is C tier. Uh, it's just too frail to be as slow as it is. It could be kind of solid into Gardenia, but the move pool is just ass. Either you have to delay Cricketot to level 16 so that he learns Bug Bite, or you have to rely on 20 base power Leech Life or 10 base power Fury Cutter. So it's really not bulky enough to pull off like any late game Parish Song traps. So there's really nothing that this thing does other than is kind of useful into Gardenia. So that's why I'm putting it in C tier, definitely behind the barrel. Luxray. Luxray is an A tier Pokemon. It's kind of almost guaranteed. Like, you know, you have a couple routes to get it. And this is another potential Intimidate Mon. The other option is Rivalry, which which is okay depending on your gender. The downside of Luxray is that it suffers from a very shallow move pool, like Generation 4 just did physical electric types completely dirty, but its special attack is okay, so you can still kind of use it, you know, with Shockwave to take care of Wake. It's decent into Rourke's Cranidos because you will evolve this at level 14 as well, so you're going to get Intimidate on the Cranidos if you happen to get Intimidate, or if you get a 
Cranial, then you'll get a rivalry boost and you can kind of take care of the Cranidos that way. As long as you don't get crit. It's very good into Cyrus who has a lot of flying types and this thing is bulky enough. So because there's not really a lot of electric types, I'm going to put this in A tier as well. I promise that I'm not just going in order here, but I do think that this is the right order for the first four in A tier. Okay, so for Kadabra and Alakazam, as well as with all the trade evolutions, we're going to separate trade evolutions in case that you don't play with trade evolutions or you can't trade them or, or whatever, right? So Kadabra and Alakazam, they're both speedy and strong. Um, they're pretty good into like Cyrus's Crobat, for example, but it is kind of hard to position these guys with so many strong physical attackers, especially in the late game. That being said, they're pretty good into Maylene, I guess, other than Lucario, who takes neutral damage from Psychic. Um, they obviously completely eviscerate Gardenia. You should be able to outspeed the Roserade and just kill it straight off the bat. And if you give it Shadow Ball, it could be okay into Lucian, as long as you avoid the Shadow Ball users on Lucian's team. Um, yeah, these aren't quite as good as in some of the other games, just because Psychic types don't hit super hard into a lot of the late game. So I'm going to put Kadabra in B tier, and Alakazam is obviously just really strong and fast, so he's going in A tier. So uh, Gyarados. Gyarados is always S tier. It's kind of inarguable. I don't know if it's quite as good as Infernape, uh, no, it is. It's just Intimidate is filthy. It's very bulky. If you get Dragon Dance, you can basically just sweep almost the entire Elite Four as long as you're a little careful there. Just a really gross Pokemon. I mean, don't use him for Volkner, I guess, but use him for everything else and you're good to go. All right, so next up is Roserade. Very cool Pokemon, but unfortunately, Grass types have it pretty rough in Sinnoh. A lot of random Pokemon, especially like Crasher Wake's water types, have ice type moves. The fact that you don't get Shiny Stone all the way until Iron Island means that you're not going to get Roserade until pretty late in the game, and at that point it's not that useful. So I am going to put this in high B tier, just because it's a pretty strong Pokemon and it's relatively bulky on the special side, but it's not quite as useful as some of the other Pokemon that you can get in the late game. Crobat. Crobat is an S-tier Pokemon as well. Crobat goes zoom. It's fast. There's a lot of fast Pokemon in this game, so it's nice to outspeed them, and it's pretty bulky. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just destroys Gardenia, for example. It's bulky enough to tank a Psybeam from Fantina's Mismagius, usually, and you can get off a Bite to do decent damage. And, you know, just in general, it's got good bulky support for the late game. But the thing that you got to keep in mind about this Crobat is that it doesn't necessarily check anything super well, right? It doesn't, it's not something that you bring out and then instantly kill. It's kind of just a generally useful Pokemon to have around to deal with a lot of different threats. Okay, Graveler and Golem. Graveler is B tier, Golem is probably going to be A tier. These are very, very good into the Mars and Jupiter fight. You can pretty much guarantee Geodude by either getting Orber Gate or the Orber Mine Encounter. You do have to watch out for the Giga Drain on Jupiter's Zubat, but pretty much everything else is completely walled by Graveler. So they're very good early game, but then they're not that good for the rest of the game because they're just slow and there's a lot of special attacking moves as well. These guys are also very good into Volkner. You just got to watch out for Raichu's Focus Blast, but everything other than that is pretty much walled and killed by Earthquakes. Onyx and Steelix. So Onyx is not quite F tier, but it's pretty damn close. Onyx is only useful for the fight against Mars's Perugly, and that is absolutely it. That's the one reason it gets the C tier is because Mars's Perugly can be pretty tricky, and if you get Onyx, it's completely checked by it. But other than that, garbage ass Pokemon. Steelix is a Steel type, so it's going to be much better. It's pretty solid into Volkner, as long as you, again, watch out for Raichu. It's good into Cyrus's Crobat, I guess, but other than that, not a lot of super, super useful matchups, but it's a strong, bulky Steel type, so it's pretty good up there. Rampardos. It's, I mean, Rampardos is very strong, but its move pool is just absolute dog shit, and it's just too slow to take advantage of its monstrous attack. It's got bad matchups into almost every single gym leader and elite four member, so I really wouldn't recommend using it. I'm gonna put it in C tier for that reason. Although it is obviously better than a lot of these Pokemon just by having like a ridiculous attack stat. Bastiodon is probably low B tier, I guess. Like if I had to pick between the two, I'd probably prefer Bastiodon because it's a bulky tank. Like I guess you can toxic stall some stuff. It is very bulky, but it does lack any strong specific matchups into anything. And it really can't hit back all that hard. It's really just not that useful. I mean, like I guess you can set up stealth rocks and you can sponge hits. It's a pretty solid pivot, but overall I wouldn't waste time going and searching for fossils to get this guy. Okay, Machoke and Machamp. I'm going to put both of these in A tier, low A tier for sure. And the reason is that these are pretty good early game. You know, they're really good into Rourke, Mars, Jupiter, especially if you have guts and you get poisoned. 
and Maylene. So these guys are really good in the early game and then they kind of fall off towards the late game as they get a little too slow and not quite bulky enough to tank really strong attacks. They could be solid into Candice, I guess, kind of a little bit. Obviously not into Frostlass, but the rest of her Pokemon, as long as you are able to outspeed them or take enough damage. And they do check Barry's Snorlax, which can be kind of difficult to take care of if you don't have like Infernape or close combat from Staraptor, for example. Golduck. Uh, Golduck is like always B tier in every single one of these things. It's I guess it's like maybe here. You know, it's a water type that is solid, but it evolves really late, which is kind of annoying. So you're going to have uh, Psyduck until like the sixth gym badge. And, you know, I mean, it can get the job done with Surf and Ice Beam, which is basically the only thing that you want from your water type. But you can always do better than Golduck, unfortunately. So Golduck is going to be sitting solid in B tier. All right. So let's talk about the Burmy evolutions. Uh, we can talk about each of these Wormadames separately. Wormadame Sand is kind of sucky, but it's not horrible. I don't know. It's like C tier. It's probably better than Onyx. I would rather have X Scissor on this guy than that guy. I guess it gets Earthquake, which is cool, which you can use for Maylene, sort of, but I would never go for that one. I would also never go for this one. This is F tier times four, weak to fire and flying. No, thank you. This is trash, which is funny because this is trash too, but actually it's the best one. This is the trash cloak one, and that's going to be in B tier. Uh, I would honestly say that it's better than all of these Pokemon in B tier so far because Bug Seal type is a pretty good defensive typing. You know, it checks Mars for example, with the Perugly, it checks Gardenia, it checks Fantina, actually, and it kind of sort of checks Maylene, but then after that, it more or less falls off. So B tier, it's not amazing, but you know, it's the best of the three different Wormatames. Motham is not good. Motham is C tier explicitly and only because it's good into Gardenia. But as we've said before, like pretty much everything is good into Gardenia, but we'll give it C tier for that reason, I guess. Although, no, you know what? Screw it. F tier. Go into F tier, Motham. I'm sorry, buddy. Once you get Quiver Dance, once you get Hurricane, you get better, but right now, you're pretty useless. Same with Beautifly. Beautifly is an F tier. It's not very good. It's a little worse than Motham, but you're more likely to get it, I guess, so maybe that's a reason to put it in C tier, put it above Motham. They're, they're basically the same Pokemon. Doesn't really matter. Dustox, I guess I'll put in C tier, low C tier, because it's slightly better with Moonlight, and you get Shield Dust, which is pretty nice, but it's way too weak and it doesn't get like a stab move until level 34 or something. And then by the level of 34, like you really shouldn't be using this Pokemon. Yeah, it's just not good. I don't think anybody's going to get offended by that. We have a combi here. This is technically a female sprite, but I guess if you get stuck with male combi, this is obviously a low, low F tier. I'm sorry, combi, you suck. Vespiqueen is B for, for B. Like, because it's a B, you get it. This Pokemon is okay. You're pretty unlikely to get her unless you waste all of your honey tree encounters on her. Uh, it's got bad typing to be as slow as it is, and it's not quite bulky enough to be that slow either. You can do some cool stuff with defend order and healing order if you want to be subject to a bunch of crits and then get really upset when you've gotten a plus six and then get crit by like a Togepi or something. But I think you're better off just using a, you know, different strat. The cool thing about Vespiquen is that it does learn Toxic by level up, so you don't have to waste your Toxic TM on it if you want like multiple Toxic style users, but there's better Pokemon than this, and yeah, Bug Flying is not an amazing typing. Pachirisu, my world champion. I'm sorry, buddy, you are going into F tier. Yes, you're very cute, especially in your Trozy sprite, but you are just not good. This is not even strong enough to one-shot Crasher Wake's Gyarados. You're going to need EV investments to one-shot Gyarados, so... You're more likely to get the lugs right anyways, so like, don't use Pachirisu, I'm sorry. It's just like, you're not strong enough to have this bad of a move pool. Super Fang's not super useful in game. I guess you get Charm, but like, no. This is, this is, this is F tier, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pachirisu. Float Soul. Float Soul is B tier, it's a fast water type. Uh, we'll put it, it's definitely better than Golduck. And honestly, based on where you get it and when it evolves, I would put it above these guys as well. It's very, very frail, so you have to be careful about that. But with enough attack and speed investment, it doesn't really matter because you'll just come in and one-shot stuff, so it doesn't really have to tank anything. What's nice about Float Soul is that it gets crunch at exactly the Fantina level cap. So as long as you watch out for Magical Leaf on the, uh, what is it, Miss Magius, then you should be able to destroy a lot of her team with crunches. Um, you may need some attack investments, you may need some speed investments a little bit to outspeed Miss Magius, but given that it is naturally pretty fast and pretty um, strong, this is a pretty good answer into Fantina's Miss Magius and the rest of her Pokemon. 
Um, it should be fast enough to outspeed Garchomp, which is great. Like this is a semi-decent Garchomp answer, as long as you have it out as the Garchomp comes out. And you should also be able to sweep Flint with Waterfall and probably be pretty fast enough to outspeed the Infernape. So this is a pretty solid Pokemon. Uh, let's put it in high B tier above Wormadam. That's that's a lot of good answers and you're pretty much guaranteed to get it. Cherum. Cherum is not F tier because of Leech Seed, but that is it. Very happy Pokemon, not very good. Uh, you're probably never going to use this guy because the Honey Tree Encounters mechanic sucks. I guess it's C tier instead of F tier. Okay, Gastrodon. These Gastrodons are the exact same Pokemon. They're just different colored, but I think they're both cute, so we're going to put them both up here. They are also world champions, which is pretty cool. They both only have one weakness, which is grass type, and that's pretty uncommon, especially after the early game. Shell of sucks. It's very bad in the early game, but once you evolve these guys, they're actually pretty bulky and pretty good answers into a lot of different threats. You're not going to get Yawn, unfortunately. It's an egg move, so no Yawn. But you do get Recover at level 54, which makes it solid into the Elite Four. And it's pretty good into Volkner, except you maybe have to watch out for the Giga Impact from Electivire, because if that crits you're in trouble. I'm going to put them in high B tier. I think uh, these guys are a little bit better than Floatzel or maybe right around. Heracross. Okay, Heracross would be S tier if it was easy to get, but given that it's not, it's going to go in A tier. It's a very, very good Pokemon. You know, it hits very hard at all points in the game, and it's bulky enough to tank attacks. It gets early Brick Break, close combat. It's really just the only downside is that it's hard to get. It's harder to get than all of the other Pokemon in A tier, so it's going to go in low A tier for now. Ambipom, another honey tree encounter. This thing is completely useless and it's also ugly, so we're putting it in C tier. It's not completely useless, I'm lying. It's got baton pass, so you can do baton pass strats and like, you know, technician is solid, I guess. Although, I don't... Let's check it. Yeah, I thought so. So it doesn't get fake out. It's, it's an egg move, so it doesn't even have technician fake out. So, I don't know. Here. That's, that's fine. Nobody's going to be upset by Ambipom being put in C tier, right? Right? Drift Blim. Drift Blim has three immunities, which makes it a very good pivot, and you can also guarantee it by just waiting until Friday to find it at Valley Windworks. Um, it's very helpful into Gardenia, although it's still weak at that point as a Drift Loon, so you're not actually going to be able to easily take care of the um, Roserade, but that's fine. It's very helpful into Maylene, for example. Uh, you know, lots of Pokemon have Ice or Dark type moves later in the game, which makes it not quite as good as it could be, but it does have a good TM moveset, very, very bad level up moveset, and you don't really want to rely on like stockpile baton pass strats and stuff, I guess. You know, I'm going to put this in B tier. It is it is a very solid Pokemon, not quite as good as potentially in like some other, you know, like ROM hacks like Renegade Platinum or in later games where it gets unburdened, but it's a pretty solid Pokemon. Just kidding, it actually does get unburdened in this game, but still my point stands mid B tier. <laughs> okay, Low Punny. So Low Punny has pretty bad abilities in this game, either completely renders held items useless with Klutz, or it has Cute Charm, which is not really that reliable. If this had Scrappy, for example, I think it would be much better because it would be very, very good into Fantina. But since it doesn't, this is pretty average. Um, it's a solid Pokemon with solid bulk. So I'm going to put it in B tier. Uh, I think it's definitely below Roserade, probably below all of these Pokemon, actually. Maybe a little bit above Bastiodon. Uh, okay, Haunter and Gengar. So Haunter and Gengar you can get at the old Chateau. There's an argument to be made to wait for Rotom instead of Haunter or Gengar, but, you know, depending on what you want, one might be better than the other. These Pokemon are stronger than Rotom. Unfortunately, they don't get Shadow Ball in time to be a good answer into Fantina, but they are potentially solid into Candace's Frostlass if you manage to get rid of the Hail or just get really lucky and hit the Frostlass on the first turn. You know, with enough special attack and speed investments, they can also be very, very good into Lucian, other than, I guess, Bronzong, right? You are going to be weak to Psychic Attacks, so you do have to be careful that you one-shot everything so that you don't get one shot in return, because these are pretty frail Pokemon. Haunter's going in B tier, I'll put it right around Alakazam and Gengar is going to go in A tier, and I'm actually going to put this above Alakazam here. These are also pretty good Pokemon to catch other Pokemon with because they can learn Mean Look, and I'll explain that there's a couple Pokemon that are pretty good, but are able to run away, which sucks. Rotom. Rotom you can guarantee if you want it. The sad thing is that you're stuck with regular Rotom in Platinum because the forms where they possess random electronics from your house, those are behind like some event in this generation or whatever, so... He's very frail, but he is excellent into Crash or Wake and Cyrus if you manage to outspeed and one-shot everything. Doesn't learn Thunderbolt by level up, which is kind of annoying, so you're going to have to use a Thunderbolt TM on him unless you want to do like 
Discharge and Charge Beam or whatever. Uh, Levitate is good because it lets you switch in on the Earthquake from Cyrus's Gyarados, which is the only electric type that's able to do that. So that's pretty cool, I guess. And of course, he also completely walls Maylene's Lucario. Like the only thing that Lucario can do is Metal Claw, which Rotom resists. So that's pretty solid. I'm going to put him in A tier, but he's not quite as good as Luxray in my opinion. Let's put him maybe right around Gengar, something like that. Maybe a little bit better than Gengar. Kind of depends on what you're looking for, right? I think Gengar is more reliable overall, but Rotom has much better like specific matchups, if that makes sense. Okay, so unfortunately, Platinum decided to not have Miss Magius, Honchkrow, Perugly, or Skuntank in the game. They're just not in the game, which is super stupid, so no need to rank them, but they're, they're all solid encounters if you want to use them in Diamond and Pearl, for example. But I'll tell you what's not a good encounter, and that is Sea King. Like, at least you get Waterfall at level 40, but don't, don't use this Pokemon. There's other water types. We've already talked about a couple of them. Don't use this. Sea King is F tier. But speaking of a Pokemon with no use, that brings us to the sponsor of this video. Nothing. Whiskash. Okay, Whiskash is a C tier Pokemon. It's not as good as Gastrodon or Quagsire even, um, but it's solid, I guess. It's still going to be in high C tier. It's it's fine. Chimeco, also C tier. There are better encounters than Chimeco in Mount Cornet or Route 211, so I'm striking it for that reason. Like, it's not a horrible Pokemon or anything, and you can get early game Chimeco pretty easily, and that makes it pretty good because it's kind of bulky, but like, I don't know. It, it falls off super hard after like gym two or three. It's solid into Gardenia. Levitate makes it good into Maylene, I guess. But its move pool is very, very bad. It doesn't learn Psybeam, so you have to use Confusion until level 46. So yeah, Chimeco is definitely going in C tier. Probably not as useful as any of these guys here. So Medicham. Medicham is an A tier Pokemon. It's good late game, but in early game, you know, Medicham or Meditite don't learn like a physical move until Force Palm at level 29. It can learn Drain Punch and all of the elemental punches without using the move tutor. Like you can just get them from art scales at the movery learner. So that's pretty cool. Other than that, you know, it doesn't have a lot of really, really solid matchups. It's pretty good into Candice, I guess, other than obviously Frostlass. And it's kind of good into Cyrus if you can outspeed and kill things with like Thunder Punch and kill the Houndoom with Drain Punch and stuff like that. So it is an A tier Pokemon, but it's not high A tier by any means. Probably right around. Yeah, I'd definitely rather have it than Machamp and this guy and this guy. So yeah, something here. Okay, Bronzong. So Bronzong is another Steel type that's just big and bulky. It doesn't have super amazing matchups into specific threats, but it has a lot of very solid matchups in general. It's physically bulky and specially bulky, which makes it very hard to take out. But the thing is that I wouldn't say that it's a super beginner friendly Pokemon because you can't just like bring it in and one shot something in return, right? It's also a huge pain in the ass to level up because Bronzor sucks. But that being said, I'm going to put this guy in low A tier, maybe right around Steelix. Actually, it's better than Steelix. Maybe Steelix and Golem in A tier is a little too generous. Maybe even these guys, but early game, I suppose these guys are pretty good. Actually, let's go ahead and move Steelix down here because you don't get Metal Code until much later anyway, so it's probably not as useful as I'm giving it credit for, but it's definitely easier to get than Heracross, so let's leave him here. Steel types are still pretty good. Okay, Rapidash. Rapidash finally does get Flame Wheel, so he has a physical fire type move in this game, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's fast enough to be okay into Candice with proper attack investments so that you can kill, like, obviously a Bomb of Snow, but also Pilaswine, for example. And maybe even Sneasel you can outspeed. I guess, like, it can outspeed a Aeron, and you have a fire type answer into Bronzong, like, if you don't get Infernape or Howdoom or Flareon or whatever, so it's not, like, useless. It's definitely better than in other games. I'm gonna put it in B tier, maybe, maybe right around Golduck. Okay, Glysaur. This is definitely an S tier Pokemon. Welcome to the club here. We're gonna put it right here. This is a phenomenal Pokemon with phenomenal typing. You get immunities to electric and ground type moves. It's strong, it's fast, and it's bulky. I don't know how they did that. Stab Earthquake is pretty gross damage. You are going to have to use your Earthquake TM on it, but I do think that that's very useful, especially because you can get Glysaur before Maylene. So it completely trivializes Maylene, and it should be fast enough to outspeed and kill everything that Volkner has, except maybe Raichu and Jolteon, but like they can't really do much to Glysaur. This is also great into Flint's Infernape if you can't outspeed the Infernape and sweep him with something else. And you should be able to outspeed and kill Cyrus's Houndoom with a bit of speed EVs as well. This also has Sword Dance and Rock Polish if you want to set up dirty sweeps. 
Just watch out for ice type attacks, obviously. Pseudo Wudo. So Pseudo Wudo is not good into any specific matchups after you get it, because in Platinum you can only get it on Route 221, which is after you get Surf. It's like kind of okay into Haunch Crow, like if you can survive the Switch and then the Psychic, and it's solid into Crobat and Weavile obviously for Cyrus, but like it's not that useful, you probably have better answers. I'm gonna put this in C tier, but it's, it's better than these Pokemon for sure. Mr. Mime. I feel like I've been mean to Mr. Mime in the past. This is a pretty good Pokemon. I just don't like using it because it's almost like kind of boring to use, if that makes sense. But it's a very good Pokemon. I'm going to put it in A tier, maybe here. The downside is that you only get it from Route 218 in this game. So that's right before Canalave City. But you do get Substitute, you get Encore, you get Baton Pass. So it has a very good utility on your team. It's not super newcomer friendly. So like if this is your first Nuzlocke, I wouldn't suggest like trying to use this thing because it teaches bad behavior as well as like you have to make sure that you do it properly you know in general mr mime specifically doesn't have like a great matchup on its own also reflect and light screen are super cool but you're subject to crits blissey blissey is an s tier pokemon it's always an s tier pokemon it's not super amazing in this game because it doesn't get seismic toss but you know you can use just like soft boil toxic ice beam like whatever you want here you're gonna have to use your toxic tm on it so that is the downside but it's still really good especially because a lot of cynthia's pokemon are special attacking pokemon so this thing can completely wall them out Unlike in Diamond and Pearl though, this is not a guaranteed Pokemon. You don't get the Happiny Egg anymore. It becomes a Togekiss Egg, so it's not guaranteed, but it is still pretty great if you can get it. Okay, Clefable. Clefable is a very solid normal type Pokemon. Not as bulky as Blissey, for example, but it is still quite bulky and it does get Moonlight, which is very useful. It sucks as a Clefairy, which makes it very hard to level up. And it's also going to be a TM sync because most of its moves come from TMs, but it's still a very useful addition into any team. It doesn't check anything super specific, but in general, it has really good answers into a lot of stuff. Let's put it right around Bronzong. Probopass, another steel type, though I would rather have Clefable or Bronzong from Mount Cornet. Uh, it's pretty good into Frostlass, I guess, but it does suffer from no recovery unless you get lucky with leftovers. Um, it's a solid bulky Stealth Rock setter if you want it, and I guess it's like pretty useful into Cyrus, for example. And you can also learn Magnet Rise if you want to like try to do something cheeky with it against Pokemon like Cyrus's Gyarados or Cynthia's Garchomp. I'm going to put it in B tier, and it's not quite as good as like these guys here. Yeah, I think I'd rather have Wormadame Steel type than Probopass. Gardevoir. So Gardevoir gets early Calm Mind. It gets Psychic at level 31 if you delay the evolution by one level from Curlia. Uh, you just have to make sure that when you're catching it that it doesn't teleport away from you, so catch it super quick, or make sure that you have Mean Look from Haunter or Gengar. It's all around a solid Pokemon, very similar to Alakazam, but you get Calm Mind, and you're not quite as fast and you're not quite as strong. Unfortunately, Psychic types aren't quite as good in this game as some other games, so this is just going to go in high B tier here. Gallade, on the other hand, is an A tier Pokemon, I think. You're not going to be able to get Gallade unless you get the male Ralts or Curlia, and you're not actually going to get it until you get to Pastoria City where you can get the Dawnstone. But it has Swords Dance, it gets Psycho Cut, Leaf Blade, Close Combat, Night Slash, these are all really good, and that makes it have a lot of utility into the Elite Four. Uh, it's obviously very specially bulky, and it also only has two weaknesses. So this is a very good Pokemon, and a very good answer into something like Cynthia's Milotic, for example, which can be pretty tough to take out quickly, especially because it has Ice Beam, so a lot of the other Grass-type users are not super good into it. You do have to be very careful about physical attacks, because this thing is very physically frail. It can die to, like, I don't know, a critical hit Sucker Punch from Absol, for example, just, just suggesting things. And uh, Steadfast makes this a very, very good answer into Weavile if the Weavile thinks that it can just fake out. So that's about it for Gallade. This is definitely going in A tier, um, and I would much rather have it than all of these guys up here. All right, the Evolutions. You do get a free Eevee here from BB or Bebe or whatever in Hearth Home City. So you get your choice between one of the, what, seven potential options? Uh, Vaporeon is a very good option here. It's a good bulky water type. It's probably the best of these slow bulky water types that don't have recovery. So I'm going to put this in A tier. It's definitely one of the better water types that you can get. Not as good as Empoleon, not as good as these guys, maybe somewhere right here, but just an all around very solid Pokemon. Surf and Ice Beam are very good from this guy. Jolteon. I think Jolteon is probably your best bet for an Evolution. This is much better than Luxray, does everything that Luxray does, but a little bit better. 
and it's good to have a nice speedy electric type that's also fairly bulky on the special side. Jolteon is phenomenal. The downside is that you get EV at level 20, so you do have to use TMs or the move tutor to get an electric type move on this Jolteon before level 43. But if you do that, it's very good into Crash or Wake as well as Cyrus. It can outspeed pretty much everything that Cyrus has and take care of the Crobat and the um, Haunch Crow very, very easily. It's good into Cynthia's Milotic and Togekiss as long as you're just careful of the mirror coat on the Milotic, okay? Flareon, um, I've definitely been too mean to Flareon in the past. People have rightfully pointed out that just because it has 130 base attack stat doesn't mean that it's 95 base special attack stat is useless, which I may have suggested, that's my bad. So Flamethrower is still gonna hurt from this guy. Flareon is pretty solid into Candice, and he has enough special defense to hopefully survive at least one attack from Frostlass, so that's not horrible. It's also good into A.A. Ron, obviously it's good into Lucian's Bronzong, and you know, like Cynthia's Rose Raid, I guess, but this is a B-tier Pokemon because I think I'd much rather have either the Jolteon or the Vaporeon for that matter, but it's pretty solid, let's put it right here. So Espeon, similarly Espeon is B-tier because Psychic types like Gardevoir are just not that good in this game, but it is very strong and it's very fast, so it's kind of like Alakazam, but an Evolution. I, I, I would just rather have some of the other Evolutions since you can only have one. Umbreon though, Umbreon is A tier. I would also categorize this like Bronzong, for example, or um, Mr. Mime, where it's not super user, like beginner friendly, but you know, you can really do wonders here with Toxic and Moonlight. And it's just in general, a very excellent Pokemon. It's super good in dilution other than against Alakazam, which has Focus Blast and Gallade, which has close combat. Umbreon is super annoying to level up and it doesn't really help that much until the late game when you get Toxic and stuff. But it is an excellent answer into Frostlass, especially because it can learn Faint Attack, which always hits, and it's bulky enough that it shouldn't take too much damage even from a Blizzard. Leafeon. So I love Leafeon personally, it's one of my favorite evolutions, but for reasons that we've already talked about with other grass type Pokemon, it's not very good in this game, and really doesn't serve any purpose that some of the other grass types aren't better at like i mean technically it's good into bertha but like that's only important if for whatever reason you're like i refuse to use a water type pokemon because bertha gets swept by any water type so yeah this is going to be c tier uh i'm going to put it in high c tier maybe that's a little biased but yeah glaceon so glaceon is another really cool pokemon that i just i wish it was better it's got very weird stats for being a pure ice type and that makes it very difficult to use it's just straight up not good into Garchomp because you won't outspeed it because Glaceon's really slow. And you also have to wait all the way until the snow routes right before Snowpoint City to evolve your Eevee into Glaceon. So this is very bad. I can't put it quite in F tier because its base stat total is still really good and it's obviously a pretty strong Pokemon, but it's definitely low C tier for sure. You know what I can put into F tier? Chatot. This thing is not good. Um, there's no boom burst in this generation, so Chatot is just a very sad singing chicken. I would never use this over Staraptor unless like I'm using the mic on my DS and I want to make Chatot say something terrible every time it uses Chatter. But yeah, don't don't use Chatot. It's it's not good. Raichu, Raichu. I think I normally put in A tier, which is probably too generous. I'm gonna put it in B tier this gen because you can get Jolteon here, and it's also not as good as Luxray, for example. But you know, it's a fast, strong special attacker. I think you're pretty much guaranteed to get this in Trophy Garden, especially if you've gotten some of the other dupes like Roselia and Staravia. So it's it's super nice into, for example, Crasher Wake's lead Gyarados. And I guess if you can get it in safely, it's good into the Gyarados and the Haunch Crow from Cyrus. But that's a lot easier said than done because this Raichu is very frail. So I'm going to put it in B tier. I think it's somewhere around Flareon. Noctowl. So Noctowl is a lot like Chatot in that it's completely outclassed by Staraptor, but because you can get it before Gardenia, I guess I will put it in low C tier with like these guys here, like Dustox or whatever and Cherim. And because of the normal typing, it's actually pretty solid, I guess, into Fantina. Like you're still gonna struggle to take care of Fantina's Miss Magius because it's just a very weak Pokemon, but at least it's specially defensive enough and resists Magical Leaf that like you should be able to tank a few Psybeams or whatever. So it's, it's not the worst Pokemon, I guess. Spiritomb. Spiritomb is B. B for bad design choice because you're never going to get this thing in a Nuzlocke because in order to get it, you have to like talk to a billion people underground. And in order to do that, you have to have friends. And if you had friends to play Pokemon with, you wouldn't be doing a Nuzlocke. So you're, you're never going to use this, but like it's a solid Pokemon, I guess. 
Garchomp is S tier. Garchomp is disgusting. It's, it's <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why Cynthia is so difficult and it's this Garchomp. Let's put Garchomp maybe here. With dupes, you can actually pretty easily guarantee this Garchomp or you can, you know, you have a high chance of getting it in Wayward Cave. Just go into the little secret entrance there. Um, you are going to have to use your Earthquake TM on it, but that's totally worth it. This Pokemon is filthy. It's not super amazing until you get Garchomp at level 48, but you do get that before Cyrus, which is super nice. And it does make Volkner completely trivial, like you just Earthquake sweep Volkner with this Garchomp. Garchomp also sweeps a Aeron, it sweeps Flint, you do pretty good damage into all of Lucian's Pokemon. Stab Earthquake will be able to one-shot basically all of the Pokemon that aren't immune to it, like uh, Bronzong. So this is a pretty, pretty good Pokemon. My guess is that you'll also be able to just like naturally outspeed Cynthia's Garchomp by accruing speed EVs. But yeah, if, if you can kill Garchomp with your own Garchomp, then that's pretty sick. Okay. Snorlax. Snorlax is A tier. I'm not putting this in S tier because this Pokemon is nearly impossible to get. I'm going to put it in low A tier because if you do manage to get it, A, it means that you're the luckiest person alive. Congratulations. B, it means that you got a free leftovers. And C, it means that you got Snorlax, which is just really bulky and good. So yeah, A tier. Unknown. Look at this unknown trying to put itself in A tier by looking like an A. Nah, this is F tier. This is an F tier Pokemon. This is better than, it's better than combi male, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, it knows hidden power. Like, I guess technically you can catch it, figure out its hidden power, and then like, maybe there's a couple of things that it does well, but no, it's, no. Lucario is A tier. Lucario is guaranteed from Iron Island, which is very cool. It's a great Pokemon with a very good move pool. It learns Swords Dance by a level up, but it's also a very good special attacker. It's definitely on the frail side here, but it is one of the better answers into Frostlass with Flash Cannon, as long as you get lucky enough to hit it. But yeah, it does resist Shadow Ball and Blizzard, so that's pretty solid. This is going in A tier, and we're going to put it above all the other Steel types, I think. Let's actually lower Empoleon here a bit. Well, no, 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 Empoleon's still pretty great. Okay, Quagsire bulky goofy boy gets early earthquake it gets yawn and it also potentially gets water absorb which is really sick other than water absorb though and rest i guess there's no recovery which makes it kind of a toss-up between whether you want to use quagsire or gastrodon i personally lean more towards quagsire a little bit so i'm going to put this right above the other two goofy water ground types but all three of these guys are definitely better than whiskash Pelipper. So Pelipper does not get Drizzle yet, but it's still a pretty solid Pokemon. It gets Roost by level up, which means you don't have to use your Roost TM on it. It's relatively physically bulky, which is nice. Uh, it does lack a special flying type move, which is pretty sad. I mean, like, unless you want to use the Move Tutor to get Air Cutter, but Air Cutter is pretty weak. But, you know, Surf and Ice Beam are both pretty cool, and that Earthquake immunity is really nice into Garchomp if you can manage to one-shot it with Ice Beam in return. So Pelipper is definitely going in B tier. I do honestly think that because of the flying type, it's actually a little bit better than Golduck, but it's right around there. Okay, Girafferidge, little beep beep pony. This is the jack of all trades, master of none kind of situation. It's it's not super good, but it's not super bad. It's sort of like discount Alakazam with a ghost type resistance, which is nice, I guess. You know, it's solid in dilution because of that immunity, but it's really just not super strong enough to make that work like even against something like espion it's probably still going to take pretty strong damage from espion's attacks and i'm not even sure if shadow ball one shots the espion so i'm gonna put it in b tier but it's really not as good as i wish it was it's better than best Quinn, so maybe we go here Okay, Hippowdon. If you have the Geodude dupe and enough patience, this Hippowdon is guaranteed from Ruin Maniac's cave or whatever. Uh, that's not what it's called. You know, you know, the one, the one with the crazy guy that is digging and the unknowns make it longer, you know, you know, that thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, permanent weather is pretty great, especially because it can help you get rid of Candace's hail, though obviously it's kind of hard to get the Hippowdon in to a good position where it's not getting hit by a blizzard from one of Candace's Pokemon. But if you can do it, it instantly gets rid of the hail, which is super nice. Um, it's very strong and very bulky. It obviously deals very well with Volkner. Very solid Pokemon all around. Just make sure that you don't get screwed by your own hail chip. I'm going to put this right around Golem. Togekiss. Togekiss is another A tier encounter. This is guaranteed from the egg that Cynthia gives you in Eterna City. It can double as both support with things like 
Encore, and Yawn, but it also is very, very powerful. This thing has massive, massive four move slot syndrome, especially because once it evolves, you lose the utility moves that it learns as a toga tick. So you do have to make sure that you keep the movesets that you want on it, but this is a very useful Pokemon and serves a lot of different roles. You just have to pick the right one for your specific team. I'm going to put this right around here. This is a very good Pokemon, and since it's guaranteed, there's no real downside to getting it. Houndoom. So Houndoom is an S-tier Pokemon. I don't think it's quite as good as Infernape, but it is another excellent fire type, probably not as good as Glysaur. So, um, you know, this has a very bad level up moveset. You are going to need to teach it Flamethrower by TM as soon as possible, and then you do get Dark Pulse from Victory Road. But this is absolutely amazing into Candice, completely checks the Frost Last as long as you don't miss a billion times. It's also very good into a Aeron as well as Lucian. So this is a very, very useful Pokemon to have. The Fire Dark type stabs are phenomenal. I would highly recommend getting this. This thing can roar your Pokemon away, so you do have to make sure that you have Mean Look or something or are able to catch it really quick because that's very frustrating. Rhydon and Rhyperior. So these are Pokemon, a, a lot of these Pokemon up here are going to be ones that like if you use the evolution item and the trade, then they're slightly better. Rhydon and Rhyperior both have monstrous attack. Rhyperior is great, especially if you get solid rock because it makes it a little more reliable into certain matchups. You can't actually get Rhydon or Rhyperior until after the Byron level cap, so that's a little annoying. But generally speaking, they're very strong Pokemon to have. They don't have like amazing matchups into anything specific but they're pretty solid and they're probably the most useful of the rock type Pokemon in the late game. I'm going to put this one right behind Graveler and I'm going to put this one in A tier maybe right behind Golem and Machamp something like this. Dusnor and Dusclops. So ghost types are always great to have in a Nuzlocke. These ones are probably the best answers into Lucian's Gallade, for example. They don't have any recovery, which is a bit of a bummer, and Dusclops isn't quite as good without Eviolite, obviously, but Dusnoir is very bulky and still hits pretty strong. I'm gonna put the Dusclops right around where Haunter is, just for ghost fidelity. And I don't think this is quite as good as Gengar or Alakazam, but maybe somewhere around Umbreon and Bronzong. Okay, so Porygon. Porygon is F tier. It's bad, but Porygon Z is obviously very good. I'm skipping Porygon 2 because if you're going to evolve Porygon into Porygon 2, I assume you can also evolve Porygon 2 into Porygon Z. But yeah, this guy, I mean, he's still solid enough. We'll, we'll put him right next to Pachirisu, but like not, not a good Pokemon. Porygon Z though, phenomenal Pokemon. I think if you just max out this thing's special attack and speed, it can probably sweep just large portions of the game by just clicking adaptability try attack. For those of you who don't know, adaptability gives an increase to the uh, same type attack bonus that you would normally get. So instead of 1.5, I believe, okay, I was right. It is doubled. So from 1.5 to two. So it's like this Porygon Z is hitting super effective try attacks into everything and coming off a very monstrous special attack stat that is very, very good. So Porygon Z is going to be A tier, doesn't have any specific threats that it directly assesses, but yeah, this Pokemon's pretty good. Why don't we put this right here? Here. Yeah. Okay, Scyther and Caesar. Both of these, in my opinion, are A tier for slightly different reasons. They're both great Pokemon. I would actually argue that Scyther might be a bit better because of Stab Technician Aerial Ace. It's going to be the strongest flying type move that you can get in the game that isn't Brave Bird, for example. These Pokemon are good into Maylene. Caesar is good into Candice, for example. They're both pretty good into Cyrus. They're good into A. Aeron. Um, especially Scyther is phenomenal into Lucian. And they're both pretty solid into a lot of Cynthia's Pokemon as well. Both of these Pokemon have a lot of really good moves that they can use. Both of them can learn U-Turn and X-Scissor, which are both phenomenal, as well as Swords Dance. And then Caesar gets Iron Head, for example, and Bullet Punch, which is great priority, especially into the Frostlass if you can get rid of the Hail. So... I think this is pretty high A tier. Why don't we put this actually right around here? It's a little bit tough to get because you're only going to get it on one or two routes. Um, and there's a lot of different encounters there. But if you manage to get these guys, they're both phenomenal. Azumarill. Azumarill is B tier. We just got a few more few more generations until you get that coveted fairy type there, buddy. But, um, you know, he's okay if he's huge power. You know, at least we get physical water type moves in this game. But not as good as these guys because they're he's too slow and... Aqua Jet is an egg move, so maybe, uh, honestly, somewhere even like around here, probably. Okay, Drapion. 
So Drapion is a phenomenal Pokemon, especially if he has battle armor. But of course, like with all these great Martian counters that we're just going to talk about here, it's kind of tough to get. This is an excellent Pokemon though if you do get it, especially into Lucian, especially, especially into Lucian's Gallade. So that's very nice. Uh, it's cool that you get Toxic Spikes if you want. That's super useful into Candice as well, because that's a way to just take care of the Frostlass that way. This would be an S tier encounter if it was more common, but since it's not, it's going in A tier right around here. Gotta make sure my nose. Okay, Toxicroak. Toxicroak is a B tier Pokemon. It's very cool, but it has a wonky moveset that is more dark than fighting. Um, it doesn't learn Drain Punch, which is stupid, so you do have to use your Brick Break TM on it, unless you want to rely on Revenge, which is its only fighting type move by level up. Sucker Punch is cool, especially in this generation where it's slightly stronger, but it can be difficult to pull off, and it may end up screwing you if the Pokemon just decides to set up instead, so it's not super reliable. Generally, it's decent into Candice, I guess, Cyrus, and Lucian is pretty good, but if you miss out on the one-shot, this is a pretty frail Pokemon and all of those things that I just mentioned are easily going to one-shot it in return. So we'll put it in B tier, maybe right around Kadabra and Haunter. We'll put it above Kadabra and Haunter. Honestly, it's probably better than Probopass. Yeah, what is Probopass doing so high? Let's put him down here. Yeah. All right, don't waste your Great Martian counter on a Carnivine. And by don't waste it, I mean you don't have a choice. <laughs> so if this happens to you, I'm sorry, but this Pokemon's not good. Um, we'll just put it at the top of F tier because it's still like usable, but it's just a waste if you're going to like, especially at the point that you get it in the game, like levitate is cool, I guess, but like grass types suck as, as I've consistently said. Being a little hypocritical here, Tangrowth is going to go into B tier because Tangrowth is a very good, very bulky Pokemon, much better than Carnivine. It would be better if it was in a different game, but grass types kind of suck in this game. But if you get them, you know, you could get worse Pokemon. It's probably somewhere around Roserade. They're, they're both pretty solid. Yan Mega. Mega Lil Fly. This has a pretty rough moveset until it learns Air Slash and Bug Buzz. But by the time it does learn those, you're going to be at the Elite Four. And it's not super useful into the Elite Four. It can be good into a lot of Lucian's Pokemon, I guess. And like Cynthia's Roserade, for example. But... That's about it. I guess theoretically you can snipe off Garchomp after some damage from another Pokemon because it does have that speed boost ability. So there's some plays to be made with Yen Mega, but I, I don't even know if it's as good as these grass types to be. Eh, well, it's better than Vespiquen, probably better than these guys, um, more reliable than these guys. Let's put him right around Toxicroak, I think. Another grass type in the Great Marsh, another F tier encounter. I can't believe this Pokemon is in this game. There's like that one ace trainer in the snow route that has this Tropius, and I think that's the only time you ever see this Pokemon in this game. It's so weird that they like, we're going to put Tropius in the game and not give it a baby evolution or a mega evolution or something, you know, like I wish this Pokemon was better. I really like it, but yeah, don't, don't, don't waste a Great Marsh encounter trying to catch this thing because you might not even catch it. Octillery. C tier, a slow water type that's not bulky, so what's the point? It's kind of cool, like it, it has a really cool move pool, but the speed is just really makes it an issue and it's not bulky enough to be that slow, sorry. Uh, Finneon, Finneon is F for fish. It's sort of fast, I guess, but like you could use plenty of other things. Let's actually put this a little bit above Seeking because I guess it's faster, but there's no reason to use this Luminion when instead you could use Tentacruel which is absolutely an S tier Pokemon. It's another, it's another stream, not stream, video of Flygon HG promoting the cult of Tentacruel in Nuzlocks. This is always an amazing Pokemon for Nuzlocks. It's fast enough and strong enough that you should be able to sweep Bertha and Flint with it. You should be able to outspeed and one-shot Garchomp with Ice Beam after just naturally accruing speed EVs. This Tentacruel is amazing and they're always amazing in every Nuzlocke because they're almost always guaranteed. So get a Tentacruel and love it, or else you die. Licky Licky. Licky Licky is C-E-C-E. -C -E. This Pokemon really doesn't do anything. It's not bad, but there are other better Pokemon to get. I would rather not get the Lickitung on Route 210 for this, or is it 215 maybe? Whichever route, the rainy route. Not worth getting this guy, but it is, you know, like it at least does something. It's probably around Bit Barrel. Altaria. Altaria. Like technically you can use a Dragon Dance sweep with Altaria, but if you have no shame in using Dragon Dance sweeping, which you shouldn't, you should do whatever you want. It's your Nuzlocke, you can do whatever you want, absolutely. But if you're gonna Dragon Dance sweep with something, you might as well Dragon Dance sweep with Gyarados, it's way easier. So like this Altaria doesn't really do much. I mean, like it's okay into some of the Elite Four, but it just is not worth the slot because it's not that strong. 
So I'm gonna put it in like B tier, I guess. Here, like here, like, like, like here. My Lodic, my Lodic's a good Pokemon, but you're going to uh, hate yourself for trying to get it. We're just gonna put it in low B tier. Like if you get it, it's good, obviously, but you have to fish in one spot in the bottom of Mount Cornet. You're not gonna get your Mount Cornet encounter until much later. You probably will just get Whiskash instead. Like it's not worth it. Don't do it. You don't need my Lodic that badly. There's Vaporeon and other water types that you can get, so it's fine. Mantine, Mantine's a very solid Pokemon. It's much like Blissey if Blissey was wet. Good special defensive tank. You know, you can get Swift Swim and Rain Support, which can be good. Like, if you do that, you've got a Garchomp answer. I'm going to put it in A tier, not S tier, just because, like, you get this so, so late. Like, it's only useful for the Elite Four and the Champion because you can't get it until Sunny Shore City. And you're obviously not really going to use it into Volkner. So it's going to be A tier, but it's a very, very good Pokemon. Not quite as good as Vaporeon because you get it so late. Let's let's put it right there, though. Okay, Obama Snow. Obama Snow is high B tier. Uh, this is pretty much only good into Cynthia's Garchomp, like if you can Ice Shard it and kill it, but that's about it. Like the permanent hail is nice and you get perfect blizzards, which is pretty cool, but you don't want to be chipping away at your own Pokemon with hail. So that's always a downside. I'm going to put this somewhere in the low B tier range, let's say. So Weavile is absolutely an S tier Pokemon. Weavile is awesome. You're not going to get it until you get into the Veilstone Galactic building, so it's pretty late. But, I mean, you also don't get Sneasel until right before Candace anyways. But this is one of the best answers into Cynthia and her Garchomp. You are going to need Move Tutor support to get the Ice Punch TM, um, but it is absolutely excellent into Lucian as well, other than Gallade and Bronzong, because you can just outspeed and kill everything with Night Slash. It is fast, but it is very frail, so don't leave it in unless you think that you're going to one-shot something. It can kind of survive special attacks, but other than that, you, you got to be be careful um but yeah i mean this is this is definitely the best answer you can have into garchomp because you're almost guaranteed to outspeed it with no speed investments and you can just sacrifice something and bring it in to take care of the garchomp in one shot okay so magnazone as usual this is one of the best pokemon in the game it's great into candace because it resists all of frostlass's attacks it's great into cyrus it's great into a aaron it's great into lucian and it also has magnet rise for earthquake if you want to be a little cheeky and set up a bit uh, definitely an S-tier Pokemon. Let's put this right here. I don't know why Elekid's there. What are you doing, Elekid? Get out of here. Okay, Electabuzz and Electivire. So these are late game Pokemon only because you only get them right before Sunny Shore City. So really, we're just evaluating whether they're useful into the Elite Four. And like, they're really good into Milotic, I guess. If you outspeed Garchomp, you can use Ice Punch, which is super useful. But like, if you got them earlier in the game, they'd be much better. I'm still going to put Electivire in B tier, or I mean Electabuzz in B tier, and Electivire in A tier. I would put this right around Raichu, probably a bit better than Raichu. And this is just a very strong electric type, which you can never doubt. I would probably, well, because it's so late game, I'm not going to put this around Luxray, but this is obviously stronger than Luxray. Let's put this just in low A tier, maybe around Clefable Gallade kind of region. Uh, it's Drapion and Hippowdon are better. Okay, similar logic here. You can get these guys a little bit earlier, I guess, like before Candice, which is pretty nice if you don't get some of the other fire types. They're okay into Cyrus, but if you get Magmar and Magmortar, it means that you don't get Magnezon. So that's kind of frustrating. I'm just going to put them pretty much exactly where I put. Well, we'll put this next to Flareon, and we'll put this also in A tier right around where Electivire is, somewhere like this. A little bit better because you get it a little earlier. Mamoswine. Mamoswine is an S tier encounter. You can almost guarantee Mamoswine with dupes here. Earthquake is obviously amazing. Ice Shard is super, super useful and is probably enough to get the one shot on Garchomp. You just have to make sure that you keep Ice Shard around before evolving um, Swinub and Pyloswine into Mamoswine because Mamoswine cannot learn Ice Shard. You have to learn it from swine up at level 28. This is also obviously very good into Volkner, so pretty solid Pokemon all around. It's a very good answer also into like some of Cyrus's team, and yeah, just just a good, big, beefy pig. Great stuff. All right, Glalie. Glalie is the forgotten child of the Snow Runt line. Why get Glalie when you can get Frostlass? Sucks to be a man, dude. Sorry, Glalie. Uh, you know, I mean, it's probably fast enough with like an insane amount of speed EVs that you can kill and one-shot Garchomp, but you're probably better off just 
using a water type, which is also going to be a better check into Flint and Bertha. So I'm um, going to put this just around Azumarill, I guess. It's it's solid. You know, 80 base all the way down is very interesting and makes it bulky enough to take some attacks and stuff. But like, I don't know. I'd, I'd much rather have Frostlass, which you obviously don't get a choice in, but you just better hope that you get Frostlass because Frostlass, I want to say, is an A tier encounter. It's uh, well, actually, let's let's put it in S tier specifically because it just definitively outspeeds Garchomp. It's really good into Cyrus. It's obviously really good into a Aeron, Bertha, and also very good into Lucian because it should be able to outspeed all of Lucian's Pokemon as well, other than the Bronzong, which you can't necessarily one-shot. But we're going to put this right around where Pi uh, Swinub is or Mama Swine. I think I would rather have Frostlass because the ghost typing is just really, really useful. Okay, last and almost least is Absol, which I did not know was in this game really until it crit killed my Gallade. This Pokemon should be better, but it isn't. The only way that you're going to get this is by going to the top of Mount Cornet and getting very lucky. So you can't even use this for Candice into her Frostlass, for example. So it's kind of a useless dark type in that regard. It's obviously very good into a lot of Lucian's Pokemon, but it is pretty slow. So yeah, this is a B tier encounter. I don't think that you're ever really going to use this ever, like unless you do like a dark mono block or something, I guess. But yeah, this I, I, I would put this around here. So there we go. Uh, this was a very, very long list. There's a lot of Pokemon in Platinum, and as you can see, a lot of them are actually quite good if you manage to get them. So here's our S and A tier encounters here. Here is our B tier and C tier encounters. Maybe I can drop some of these B tier Pokemon down into the C tier because C tier is pretty small right now, but whatever. And then here are our F tier stinkers. So yeah, uh, again, this is just my opinion. Um, let me know if you have any thoughts on these rankings, what you disagree with, what you agree with. I really hope that this is helpful to people. This is it's the main reason that I do this is that I hope that it does encourage other people and give people the confidence to do a Nuzlocke themselves because I really love doing Nuzlocke and I really want to make that as inclusive and as easy for people to get into as possible. So absolutely let me know if there's anything else that you guys think might be useful. Um, please keep giving me feedback on these videos. We're growing as we go. So I really appreciate all the support and I hope everybody has a great day. All right, be nice to each other and I will see you next time. Peace.